Hi, I'm Brent Feldman. We're back with another episode of Mix and Matchbox. Today joining me is John Freeborn, Director of Design at Art of Problem Solving and the editor of Tales of Zine. So welcome, John. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for bringing me on. Appreciate it. Definitely. Thank you so much for being here. Um, well, I'm going to jump right into the question. So happy to be, uh, you know, asking some of these as uh, I, I actually, um, you know, have a lot of shared interests with you. And we got a chance to meet at a, uh, a conference not too long ago. Um, so yeah. really happy to be digging in on some questions. Awesome. Let's do it. Cool. Well, uh, it, you went to school for architecture and design, and now you're the director of design for an ed tech company. Um, you know, how did you kind of get to where you're at professionally? That's a it's a long and winding story, but uh, about halfway through, or maybe even before, halfway through my architecture education, I realized that I wasn't going to be an architect. Um, being an architect is a really long slog. Uh, it's kind of like some people say it's like a 50 year old's creative pursuit where you have to do it for so long before you get to this point where you can, you know, kind of do the really cool, fun stuff where you're designing a whole building. Um, a lot of my friends were doing like bathrooms and window jams and, uh, you know, straight out of school, working 60 hours a week, hating themselves. Um, and uh, while I was in college, I was like starting a skateboard company and like, doing printmaking and doing video and doing anything aside from my major. Um, I did enjoy my major and I really appreciate the education of it, but um, but I knew pretty early that that wasn't going to be in the cards. So um, as soon as I graduated, I started doing like production design work at some ad agencies and and the rest is kind of like just off on the path of doing design work day to day. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. That's cool. Uh, and, you know, we actually happened to meet at Figma's Config, uh, their conference right. in uh, the Bay Area. And uh, by the way, a very cool conference. I have to give a shout out to the yeah Figma team for putting on a really, really cool event. Um, that was that was great. And not to mention yeah, that that's how we got introduced. So even better. Totally. Yeah. yeah, no, that's a great conference. I'd been before when it was much, much smaller and uh, they do amazing an amazing job of putting that on. That's awesome. Yeah. And, uh, and, and that's where we found out, uh, I, I think I was wearing a palace hoodie and you yep. have, you happen to notice, and I, I feel like that's, that's a cue, uh, you know, of like one, one skateboard, uh, person to another, uh, to, to really recognize, you know, like, all right, I, I, I see you, uh, anyway. And, uh, that's where we kind of recognize, yeah, shared interest in skateboarding. Um, and as a project of yours, you started a skateboarding zine in which each issue covers a different theme. Uh, and so this is chicken or egg question. Uh, was it skateboarding that led you into design or design that led you into skateboarding? <laughs> uh, it's probably skateboarding that led me into design. Um, you know, I was always, I guess, like somewhat of a creative kid playing with Legos and, you know, video games and I guess like very feeble attempts at coding. But, um, you know, when you start skateboarding and you're surrounded by the graphics and the creativity that is skateboarding and the music and everything, uh, I think it just infects you. And soon, you know, I'm drawing logos in my notebooks and, um, you know, creating zines not too long thereafter. And uh, that community, you know, as we were coming up was really, really interesting. Um, we had some really great zines from my area that were just like aspirational. Um, Adam Wallacabbage is one of those people who was making this thing called Wonder Rolling News, which ended up in Thrasher a couple of times. I mean, it was just really high level. Um, my zine was not high level. My zine was scrappy and pasted together, and um, but a lot of fun. And you just kind of, you find yourself in that world and soon, you know, art school. Yeah, that, that, that's the thing. That's a catalyst. Yeah. <laughs> it's, right. the, it's the gateway yeah. drug to art school. Totally. <laughs> Oh, uh, that's awesome. Um, well, you know, I, I happen to notice that uh, that you share, you know, sort of like weekly links on LinkedIn to design resources. And, uh, you know, and in a way, you know, kind of being a, a thought leader or, um, you know, really just like somebody who wants to kind of get more of this information out there. And, uh, and you're an adjunct professor. And your zine is really about sharing your passion for skateboarding. 
Um, what would you say is kind of like the most important thing for you about putting those things out there and, and really sharing your perspective? You know, I think just doing zines from like a very young age. And I think a lot of what we do in sort of skateboard world is like we're sharing and celebrating each other and, you know, slamming your board on the on the deck when someone lands a trick. And it's kind of like it just becomes part of the culture. And when I was the the links thing started when I was a I was a manager for a small team, they were fairly green as a group. And I was just trying to find ways to like give them give them fuel for like their work, but also personally. So I started this little internal uh, weekly links thing where I would find things that were relevant to their interests, whether it was like accessibility or UI or animation whatever the thing was and i would kind of feed everybody a link or two every week um, but i would share them as a as an email so everybody could get them and then i just kind of realized it's like well i should just put this on medium or something because i'm creating this and it has this audience of six but maybe a few other people would find it interesting um that was like seven years ago and i've been doing it every week since um it's kind of grown and, and receded and grown and at this point um uh, people respond to it re like pretty well it's, it's sometimes a little bit of a vacuum where you're putting these things out and you're like is anybody paying attention and then you get like a really nice slack message from somebody about like i love your links i i look at them every week i do it at lunch and i really enjoy that and i'm like okay so people are out there they're, they're paying attention and um for me it's just like i don't like things that come from just one creative discipline. I try to find things from across the spectrum, whether it's architecture, whether it's industrial design. There is usually some web stuff, since that's most of what my day-to-day -day is like. But um, there are weeks when there's zero web or digital at all. It's just like cool packaging I found or uh, an interesting new technology, like some new concrete made out of potatoes. Who knows? Like it, it's, it's always something, but I think um, it's it's what I do sort of naturally because I'm a curious person and so I'm always like reading these things. So for me, it's almost I kind of do it for myself, but then I find other people find it super useful. So it's a it's a double win. Yeah, that it, it is really cool. I will say I really appreciate the diversity in your links as well. Uh, I am here not Thanks. just not just in a comment on the sidebar, but tell you, you know, personally, yeah. I like that. It, like you feel like you know sometimes in you know uh, design resources, like gosh, you get like a blitz of like there's AI everything, and you're like, okay, great, cool. Yeah. These are neat <laughs> resources, and they are fun, and obviously right. it's developing technology. But wow, you know, the inspiration can totally come from anywhere. So I, I love the yeah. diversity. And I feel like that's like, that's, that's the thing that like continues to like motivate and drive. So it's cool. yeah, and I'm probably like you. I mean, I'm so I subscribe to a lot of different newsletters. And, you know, after a while, you start to feel like you're seeing the same three links in all the newsletters. And you're like, why are they like, are they just copying and pasting from each other? Is this just like, I mean, yeah, it could be AI one week, it could be something else the next. But yeah, I try to mix it up a little bit more. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. super cool. Um, so on the other sh side of like, you know, sharing info is basically is like uh, learning and being a seasoned professional in the design, like, you know, realm world. Um, what do you feel like is still kind of like left to learn? For me personally? Yeah. Oh, gosh, so much. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am always trying to get, you know, a little better at my job, which is, I guess, product design. That's sort of my main uh, focus day to day. Uh, I would say someone who, you know, didn't study HCI in school or didn't study even computer science, uh, there's always like new stuff that I should be digging into. Um, and at the same time, I'm also a manager of six people now, seven people. I can't, can't lose track. We keep growing. Um, and being a manager is a learning curve as well. Um, so, you know, I'm constantly reading books about working with people and uh, designers are a little bit of a different animal. They're not, you know, accountants. They have pretty wild differences in how they do their jobs. So, you know, it's really just like, I, I tend to, I, I always wanna be learning something. So even if it's, you know, I just finished a book called Nine Lies About Work, which was amazing. 
And I'm like going to start running some of the exercises that I found from that book with my team just to kind of see how it goes. And um, and then on the flip side, I'm like, I, I just I'm like halfway through uh, Doom Guy, which is the John Romero biography, which is amazing. Um, totally not applicable to my day job, but I love video games. So why not? Um, but it's like you never know where some little gem of like something that's going to help you do what you do is going to be. Um, I'm not going to be doing assembly code for like an old PC. So some of the lessons from John Romero are not super helpful. But at the same time, uh, his creative process is pretty amazing. Uh, what they were able to create with the tools they were that had at the time is uh, it's just pretty groundbreaking, which obviously Doom and Quake and all those games made an impact. Oh my gosh, I uh, yeah. I played them so obsessively as a kid. I and I remember getting Doom and that being like totally off limits for some kids too. You know, they're like, oh, oh yeah. wow, it's too gory, and I was like, man, these pixels of blood are totally disturbing. You know, like, yeah. oh, but I, I didn't know that that game came out the day after, um, like, the big video game Congress like warnings. Like, it 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 dropped the day after. No was, way. Yeah, it's really funny. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Wow. De definitely fundamental. And then, yeah, as you mentioned, Quake, I actually downloaded uh, off Steam uh, of one of okay. the, yeah, the reissued, like, kind of version oh, nice. of it. Yeah, yeah. And it, wonderful. Still great gameplay. Yeah. That's what they, I mean, it's definitely a focus and it, it, it holds up. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, <laughs> okay. And then, you know, I guess, um, I, I have to ask because I, when I saw this digging through your LinkedIn, you know, sort of profile, I, I was like, oh, well, that's kind of awesome. Your, uh, your first job listed on LinkedIn is as an intern for X large, extra large, however you want to say it. But yeah. uh, that had to be really cool in 1995. <laughs> uh, and, and I assume it had to be fundamental in shaping your career. Um, do you have any like, you know, kind of words for how you feel about it? <laughs> uh it's surreal definitely um so i went to school for architecture uh at RISD, and um one of my teachers was uh, an adjunct from la who had come out for a semester and he went to school with adam silverman who was one of the co-founders of x large and who also went to RISD. um x large initially was in new york but they they were both RISD. or well, the adam was a RISD guy and so they knew each other, it was a small world and XLarge was growing and busy and they wanted an intern and they'd never had an intern before. Um, and he basically just pitched it to me. It was like, would you be interested? And I was like, of course I'd be interested. Like that's, uh, and this was a long time ago. So there were some emails exchanged. It was kind of like, yeah, if you're in LA, like, let's do this. And I was like, I don't live in LA. I, I'm in Providence, Rhode Island. Um, but coincidentally, I was dating a girl who was from LA. And she was going back for the summer. So I basically just got in my car and I drove to California with the kind of loose promise of an internship and then showed up and they were like, OK, cool. <laughs> and yeah, I worked there for the summer. Uh, I was doing t-shirt graphics like for the line and then um also doing some stuff for the store and sort of my architecture role and uh yeah it was kind of crazy it was in glendale um you know just east of la and day to day was pretty normal you know like uh, my boss eli was like kind of ran the art department and sometimes it was very random like hey, we're going to do this t-shirt graphic with X large spelled in uh, serial uh, alphabets. He's like, I need you to go to the store and get five boxes of alphabets, and we're going to make this. And I was like, OK, cool. And then, of course, there's no R in five boxes. So then I'm sculpting an R out of other letters and gluing them together. And um, yeah, total intern stuff. But like, it was a blast and super fun and uh, occasionally the beastie boys would come through of course which was always a, was always a, a treat um but you know i was like trying to be cool and like not lose my mind um and then one day out of the blue eli was like you want to go over to the studio and i was like yeah okay i 
I didn't really know what I was being asked to do. We'd go over to their studio, which was blocks away, the Beastie Boys studio. Um, and they're just hanging out. And next thing I know, we're playing basketball. They had a hoop in their studio. We're playing two on two with the Beastie Boys. And before I knew it, what went from like a relatively calm, you know, just laid back two on two game, everything got like hyped and escalated and everybody's talking shit. And it sounded like a Beastie Boys record because <laughs> they're just like yelling at each other and like, it just turned into a music video in my brain. And I was just trying to keep it together the whole time. I was like, this is unreal. I that's, that's unbelievable. That is wild. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That is yeah. so cool. Uh, did, it was too much. Yeah, yeah. definitely. I know, like, yeah. especially being that age and then having right. that be like the thing that you're doing just casually. Like, yeah. sure. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, let's just go over there and hang out. And yeah, sure. Yeah. Normal. Just yeah. an afternoon in LA. No big deal. <laughs> That's so awesome. Wow. Do you have any of the t shirts like that you did? I don't. I. It's funny. I'm generally pretty much like a, I used to be quite a hoarder with like that kind of stuff, especially if it was something I made. I, I kept that. Um, I do have some stickers somewhere, buried some of those gorilla stickers because um, we made a lot of those. But yeah, it's funny. None of the t-shirts. I don't think I have anything. We did like an Eames themed one. I remember that. Um, there was the alphabets thing, which was hilarious. Uh, yeah, I don't remember. We were churning them out back then. I mean, they were... I want to say we were doing like 20 or 30 t-shirts in each quarter. So that summer, you know, we were just pumping out ideas. I don't even remember what made the line, but, uh, but they were really great. Like when I started my skateboard company a little bit, a little bit later, uh, they bought a bunch of stuff for their stores from our line. So like they were super supportive. It was awesome. Full circle. Yeah. That's really yeah. cool. Uh, uh, I think it was Brooklyn Dom who was on a sneakers podcast the other day and he was mm -hmm. talking about just like I like going into sneakers uh, or into uh, skate stores and just buying a t-shirt just like keeping the cycle going supporting <laughs> skate shops yeah. like, I was like yeah. it, 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 that is just a wonderful thing about the community Like, yeah yeah I mean it was really cool of them I think because we had done the, the big skate show uh, in, in San Diego and nobody knew who we were but you know, for them, for us, a big order of, you know, maybe $5,000 or something was like, that was like, we actually wrote an order, something happened here. Maybe we paid for the booth. Um, but yeah, like, they didn't have to do that. But it was just such a cool thing. You know, that's awesome. That's really neat. Wow. Um, well, that is that is super cool. Um, uh, as for, you know, what you think about, you know, the world of skateboarding, it's, it, it, it seems to have obviously, um, you know, a big impact on your life, but including, you know, sort of culture and art, um, what do you think it's done for you in terms of your professional career? I know you've kind of, you know, yeah. painted a picture of how it influenced, obviously, you know, uh, your, your internship or other places, right. but I mean, like, you know, maybe in a broader picture. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to say. I think, like, you know, it's such a small community, skateboarding, but also even design, like, you you meet people you find sort of like common connections you find out oh they used to skate like so there's a weird overlap and i also feel like i mean i'm a bit of a person who like kind of forges a path and i don't always as you've probably seen from my linkedin my history is quite diverse i've worked with all kinds of different companies um and i i'm willing to kind of put myself out there into spaces that maybe i probably i mean some people might not do that um it's worked out for me i've worked at some really cool companies worked for some really amazing brands and i do think something about just like the willingness to fail miserably from <laughs> skateboarding of like you'll throw yourself down a set of stairs 50 times in the hopes that maybe one of those times everything will work um i kind of feel like looking for a job is the same way like you can't really worry about failing. Uh, you're going to get so many rejections along the way. And I, I'm sure I've applied for thousands of jobs that I had no business applying for because either I didn't know better or maybe it was too green or, but like a few of those have panned out. So 
um, it's worked out in the end. You know, actually, when I used to skate as a kid, I would be trying some trick 40 times. And I used to have this little habit where if things were not going well, I would try something that I knew I couldn't do, like three levels harder than what I was trying. And those were usually huge failures, but it would kind of take me out of what I was doing. And then I would go back to what I was trying before. And like, all of a sudden that trick was easy. And it was like kind of a weird little gimmick that I did, but it like always just helped me kind of reset my brain. And uh, I, I just found it kind of liberating to like let myself really try something really dumb and see how it goes. Like, I'm going to try a 540 right now. Like, that's not going to happen. But what what does that feel like? What is that, you know? And then after that, a kickflip is like not so hard. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Uh, wow. Uh, hope, actually, I'm going to try that. Uh, I still can't. My kickflip still sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Mine are quite ugly too, but once in a while, I roll away. Yeah. <laughs> uh but oh uh, that's that i feel like uh it's funny it's like you know it's yeah definitely centered around skateboarding but that's great advice um uh i guess um you know that's what it's done maybe for your uh professional career uh and and i obviously like skateboarding now in general has so much more visibility like you know versus what it used to and and, sure. and it's really cool to hear you know um all kind of like you know skateboarders from back in the day talk about like you know like pal peralta and like you know really right. like you know kind of like origin story kind of skateboarding stuff um but you know now obviously with its visibility impact on culture you know what what um do you think it's done for the wider world of design it's definitely influenced you know fashion and streetwear and i mean look at how many women are wearing thrasher t-shirts i mean that's just like a weird phenomenon santa cruz red dog t-shirts like these things have infiltrated the wider culture um i mean you have rappers like little john who skate I and mean, this is just not something that would have ever happened when we were kids i mean skateboarding was the dirty underbelly of activities it was not cool at all um yeah, it's a totally different world. It's influenced like so many different things. I've even seen like NBA players who skate, which I'm sure they're not supposed to, but they're quite good. I mean, they're professional athletes. They have physical skills and gifts uh, that we can only imagine. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's so different and it touches a lot of different things. I mean, the fact that it's in the Olympics now is just mind blowing. Um, but I do appreciate that some of the spirit of it is maintained. Um, I think for me, when I watch the Japan Olympics and the the way that the the athletes were like supporting each other and like cheering each other on and hugging each other and like really celebrating what people were doing, that it, you would not see that in other sports in the Olympics. Like, I mean in ice skating that, that just wouldn't happen it's so competitive and intense and like and not that the skateboarders aren't competitive but like there's just not that level of like all or nothing winning at all costs kind of attitude and it's refreshing and i hopefully maybe some of that bleeds out into the wider world if, if all goes well definitely yeah absolutely i uh, the yeah the sense of camaraderie and uh you know and, and kind of like to togetherness and supporting right. you know just yeah supportive in general it, it is it's super cool to see so yeah right. that's that's super neat um it i i i think there's like one thing that i also was like just reassured about the other day of like you know we went into a skate shop and they had videos on in the back and uh mm -hmm. you know i kind of you know usual i yeah. not not that this was a huge like wider world thing but actually just seeing my son go back there and just kind of like yep veg out on the videos i'm like yeah things are yep. working just fine <laughs> like <laughs> things are right in the world uh-huh <laughs> right uh cool well um you know uh, definitely a big part of you know uh you know uh, kind of like our early conversations were definitely like um your zine which is really mm -hmm. neat and i know that there's a lot of work that goes into documenting or cataloging all those things that you're doing and uh and right now the audience is you know i i, I not to prod but kind of limited by your 
own choice of distribution yeah. and obviously something we even kind of talked about briefly. Yeah. Um, but, you know, do you at any point feel like, you know, more people need exposure to the kind of things that you're putting together um, or it's uh, only appreciated by the people that are really dying to find it? Yeah, I mean, actually, since we chatted about it, um, I have been thinking about it a lot. I mean, currently, the zine is only available by subscription or in skate shops. Um, and that's it. And that was semi intentional early on, because I wanted to try to build this network of like, all the best skate shops will have the zine. And that's like, I did, I was very much like wanting to support skate shops and wanted people to like go to the skate shop. And some skate shops use them as like a promo. So you get the zine if you buy a board or buy something. And I love that. Like that's always, you know, gave me warm the warm and fuzzies when I would see those social media posts when we would get zines out to the shops. But um, you know, we can we're very small. We print last time we printed 1500, which is not a lot as a drop. Like that's that's a that's 10 minutes on social media. That's like that's nothing. Um, so yeah, I think there are opportunities to kind of expand what we're doing and, and more publish more of what, you know, the hard work that kind of goes into creating this content. Uh, the current issue that we're working on is, is all painting. So it's painters that skate, um, so fine artists basically, and it's 20 little mini interviews with all these different skateboarders who, you know, paint for a living. Um, and I would hate for like that to just kind of like this have this blip in a print magazine that maybe a thousand people see. So I am like very, very trying to figure out like what's the best method of, of sharing this this content and getting you know, getting their work out there and giving them the shine that they deserve. And everybody, you know, took time and effort to put these things together and do the interviews and share their work and um yeah, so I mean, obviously, we have some social media. We're on Instagram, Tales of Skateboarding. We have, that's about it, <laughs> actually. Um, we have a, a website, of course, which is talesof.org. And, but that's like, we're, I mean, I I have a day job. So like, I post once in a while. It's, it's usually when I have an issue coming out, I'll be a little more regular about it. But um yeah, I'm pretty busy in, in regular life. So it's it's there's no staff. It's like a group of contributors and most of our contributors have day jobs too. So while everybody's trying to pull this together, it's it's not um it's not a money making operation. <laughs> Fair enough. Totally a passion. Um yeah. it's really cool. And, and and you know, I I um you know, from my standpoint too, like, you know, it's, it's cool when you see people producing really cool things and like, you know, sometimes you're like, oh yeah, it would be really nice if that existed and, you know, a larger realm. But yeah. I, I also think like there's something to exclusivity too, in, in a certain sure. extent, you know, whether yeah. it's not necessarily to keep it to a refined audience so that only like, you know, but it's the kind of, if you know, you know, like the, right. the subtle wink of like, yeah, uh huh, mm -hmm. yeah, you get it. Yeah. Um, so anyway, it's, it's very cool, but I, I know like actually, uh, it sounds like the content you're producing is really, you know, it, neat in a broader sense. And, uh, and that's why, yeah, definitely like, um, yeah, that's why I continue to ask. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's a great question. I, and I, even, uh, you know, you're, you doing this podcast got me thinking more about like, should there be a podcast for the zine? Uh, people have asked that question and it's definitely like, I'm still noodling on how to make that real. Uh, I've talked to a few of the collaborators and people are interested, um, but haven't quite got there yet. I'm still yeah. afraid of the level of work involved. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Uh, definitely. Yeah. Well, you know, I, you, you would have a subscriber right here. I would definitely. Right on. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, cool. Well then I guess this actually just leaves one last question, uh, which is, do you have any plans for upcoming issues that you can share? I know that you mentioned, yeah. you know, about the, you know, painting, uh, or are there, you know, sort of any like interviews or or pieces or, you know, anything that you're kind of like dying to put in a future issue? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of ideas floating around and really each issue is kind of curated by a different person. So they bring their perspective to the table. So we have kind of a, a short list of like folks who have already said, yeah, I'm going to do it. Um, just getting them nailed down to actually do it. So Ben Horton, who does Slave Skateboards, he's going to do an issue. Uh, there's a photographer named Willow 
who's out of uh, San Diego. He's going to do an issue. He's he's a younger guy, but amazing shooter. Shoots for a lot of different people. Um, there's a guy out of France, uh, Sergei Vucic, who's a photographer and artist. He's going to do an issue. Um, and then there's sort of like, I always have different ideas. I have an idea. Uh, we did uh, an issue called Outsiders, which is all about like people who weren't quite in the skateboard industry. And I'm going to do the flip side of that called Insiders. Uh, people who've been working in skateboarding forever, but like you don't know who they are. Uh, so we're going to do a bunch of interviews with those folks. Um, so that'll be an issue. Uh, yeah, we have like it, it's the the problem is not a lack of ideas and content. It's the time and effort and uh, just like work that needs to go to like to make each one of these issues as nice as we really want them to be. Like they're 100 pages. It's it's no small effort. Yeah, maybe yeah. Vice could just pick you up and then. Yeah. You know, yeah, you just become an arm of, you know, of the vice media empire. Uh huh. Yeah. Either that or, you know, like, uh, we just need like a fans or somebody to say, hey, what you're doing is cool. Let's, yeah. let's support this. This is the shout out right now. Vans, you, yep. you know where it's at. There's, there's <laughs> a possibility right here. Oh, uh, that's, yeah. that's awesome, though. Yeah. And it's so cool that there's like so much, you know, potential content coming up and it's put together with such care yeah. and attention, you know. <laughs> We're trying. We're trying. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, well, that's it. As far as questions, I, kn I know I could probably think of a thousand things to, you know, ask you. I know we're even chatting about like, who do you follow on Instagram as far as skaters and stuff? And yeah. wow, probably go on for a long time. But really, honestly, I appreciate you being on the podcast so much. Thank you for of joining. Uh, and and really, uh, uh, definitely, if uh, if I will put links to all the stuff uh, in the description awesome. as well. Yeah, which would hopefully lead people to it. And yeah. Um, and yeah, definitely. Just thanks for being here. I appreciate it, Brent. Thanks for having me. Yeah, definitely. Well, this has been another episode of Mix and Matchbox. I am Brent Feldman. Please like and subscribe. Thanks.